Denver News 12 is brought to you by Kenneth Nugent. From the station that's on your side, News 12, first at 5, continues. Richmond County number, uh, Richmond County has a number from the landing, formerly known as Fox Den. Neighbors continue to call the city about their safety concerns. Recently, two men recovering from being assaulted in the landing apartments, but this isn't uncommon. Neighbors have been reporting issues there over the past few weeks. Our Will Ryu takes a look at what the city is trying to do. There's always been questions about the apartments formerly known as Fox Den. Now we've heard commissioners speak up about improvements needed at apartments across the city. Now they finally have the tools like these in place to hopefully help cut down on that crime. At the entrance of the landing, or better known as Fox Den Apartments, is starting to see some improvements to help cut down on crime. Owners say a month ago they added two new flock cameras at the entrance. They're ramping up security with a new gate that can only be opened with a fob. Numbers from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office reflect the need for more security. 37 calls for crime through last month. That's on pace to top last year's 70 calls. What's concerning about that is last year's total calls matched the three years before then combined. City leaders are working with the new owners to secure the property, but say people need to be more responsible. You can't put everything on the owner of any property. You've got to put the big majority of the problems in the complex squarely where they belong, and that's on the people that live there. And we're digging deeper into how city leaders say there needs to be a collective effort to help cut down on this crime coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock. Reporting in Augusta, Will Rio on your side. All right, thanks for that, Will. Taking a look at traffic now on River County. Deputies wrapped up their search today off of Ponderosa's low 70s, back to the upper 80s for tomorrow afternoon, and the potential for a few more scattered showers and storms. Much more on that weekend forecast coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Anthony. Burke County deputies wrapped up their search today off of Ponderosa Road. I want to show you an aerial view of the woods and the pond to show you what they're up against. This is from one of our drones. They've been searching this area since yesterday, and they told us they would not leave unless there was no reason to be there. One of our reporters checked in this afternoon to see how it went. Deputies searched all three ponds, they say, but they say they didn't find anything. It is back to the drawing board for the investigation now. We'll keep you updated when more information is available. All right, take a look at this. A man punched a convicted killer in Orangeburg County Court today. The man is the victim's father who rushed towards Lindsey Jones and punched him in the back. Officers tried to pull them apart. Jones pleaded guilty to the murder of 18-year-old Willie Fields, who died from gunshot wounds. Jones's brother, Jalen Jones, was tried as well, but he's charged with accessory after the fact. A case has been reopened after yesterday's grand jury indictment of former attorney Alec Murdoch. The SC Highway Patrol ruled 19-year-old Stephen Smith's death from a hit and run, but investigators say that it wasn't an accident seven years ago. Murdoch's name was brought up several times by the Smith family. His mother says they've been waiting a long time for answers, but she knows she's not the only one grieving. She says she hopes her son's case will bring justice. A judge denied bond for a 19-year-old girl in connection with a Tinder date murder in Charleston. Her lawyers asked for a $50,000 bond for murder and armed robbery, but the judge says the crime was too recent to allow it. She's accused of conspiring with two adults to lure 24-year-old Alan Johnson III to their house and rob him. When the victim fought back, the scene escalated. She met him on Tinder and allegedly used their relationship to get him vulnerable. Johnson's family says the judge made the right choice. If you're a little worried about the rise in monkeypox cases, testing is available today. Quest Diagnostics sent out a news release saying they will start testing for it. There is a lab in Evans and also across the river in Aiken. If you start to see a rash, they do recommend contacting your doctor to see if you should get tested. Expect for doctors to take a Q-tip swab on the spot if you get one. Quest Diagnostics expects to provide testing up to 6,000 people by the end of the month. The number of reported U.S. monkeypox cases just jumped 40% in one day. 
Officials think the real count is actually higher because that's just confirmed and probable cases. Amy Killey talks about the monkeypox vaccine supply in the U.S. They were at worst on more sensitive skin, excruciatingly painful. That four is one of the growing number of Americans who've had monkeypox. He's describing how painful lesions from the disease can feel. Between Wednesday and last night, U.S. cases jumped 40 percent. Worldwide, they've surpassed 11,000. And officials say the real numbers are probably higher. We should be and will be testing literally 10 times the amount of people that we were testing prior. It's unclear if the U.S. jump is from increased testing, delayed reporting, or something else. But history suggests vaccinations could end the outbreak. Many vaccines prevent both monkeypox and smallpox. Smallpox was deemed eradicated more than 40 years ago, and the U.S. stopped vaccinating against it. So, shots are in short supply. We got an allotment of 200 vaccines, and the appointments for that went in about an hour and a half. The U.S. is importing more from Denmark. Hundreds of thousands, really reaching to about 1.1 million, that will be available relatively soon. With monkeypox costs looming, the House Speaker is urging Senate action on the stalled COVID relief. Now we have the monkeypox, and that is a, another call for resources. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. We just learned today Georgia CPH is already getting monkeypox vaccines. The supply is limited, but they have approximately 3,000 doses for those who want extra protection. There's been a heartbeat bill waiting for direction in Georgia, and federal judge Pryor asked for attorneys to file any legal briefs by the end of today. Now, if they left the block, then it goes into effect, lift it rather, then it goes into effect immediately. Any physicians or expecting mothers who end a pregnancy after six weeks could be prosecuted. By this point, most attorneys have responded, so we'll keep you updated as more information is released. Let's take a quick look at AAA's averages for regular gas prices in Georgia and South Carolina. It looks like we're both feeling some relief at the pump and prices are going down. Still high, though, about $4.10 a gallon at the pump. The national average, $4.58 this week, but that's gone down in the past week. One town really struggling to keep up with the high gas prices, so they're asking the governor to reconsider the gas tax. Some people are paying 50 to 60 cents more per gallon than usual. State Representative Carl Anderson sent a letter to Governor McMaster to help people fill their tanks up at the pump. Some even travel farther to Myrtle Beach to get gas. Just get like $20 just to carry me through, but I cannot fill it up. There's no way. It's expensive, according to Gas Buddy. The cheapest gas there is $4, but other counties are paying less than that. Unless there's a state of emergency, the Attorney General's office can't act. There are more lane closures in Columbia County this week as crews work to fix the roads there. From 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. starting tomorrow, there will be some lanes closed on Old Blackstone Camp Road at the intersection with Fury's Ferry Road. Then. Farther down Fury's Ferry, lanes from Hammonds Ferry to Southern Pines Drive will be closed at the same time. They'll reopen a week later. Make sure to prepare your daily commutes ahead of time because there are going to be delays and you don't want to get stuck in traffic. After the break, the Aiken County Animal Shelters need to find homes for some furry friend is, well, getting out of hand. See how they're trying to handle that their buildings are almost full. And you know what? It's a good deal for you, Anthony, if you want to get a little yeah, buddy for Storm. You got to get a friend for Storm. We'll see, I know. We'll see how that goes, we'll go, especially if it ends up being one of those cute kittens. As far as that radar goes, we are seeing a few scattered showers and storms across the CSRA, some heavier storms in some of our southwestern counties. We'll time those out and talk about the weekend temperatures coming up next. Animal shelters across South Carolina have so many dogs and cats needing a forever home. So a new event in our area hopes to save at least 1,500 pets through adoptions. Our intern, Sydney Hood, introduces us to some cute playmates. We are at capacity at this point. It's a reality many animal shelters face right now. 
too many animals, not enough resources in order to help them. At the SPCA Albert Center, there is no wiggle room inside. With more animals coming than going. With 25 adoptions last week, it sounds great, but we also had 25 animals come in. So it's a, almost a one-for-one -one exchange for animals. For the center, overcrowding can get overwhelming. So overcrowding means that we have to turn people away, and that's certainly something we never want to do. That's why the center is taking part in the Pick Me South Carolina Adoption Event. It's an initiative in order to promote uh, uh, adoption of homeless animals uh, and to reduce adoption fees so that that's not a barrier to adoption. Just a few miles down the road, the Aiken County Animal Shelter is seeing maximum capacity two. We have more pets in need and less people coming to adopt. That's why the shelter is also participating in the statewide project. These are just some really wonderful animals that are down on their luck and just need a chance. By reducing adoption prices, both shelters hope to help these furry faces find their forever homes. We're really looking for the people to come forward if they have room in their hearts and room in their homes. In Aiken, Sydney Hood, on your side. Oh, and I can speak from experience. Two of my three came from the Aiken County Animal Shelter, and they've added so much to our family. Of course, we will have the hours linked on our web story at wrdw.com so you know when you can go by and check out all those little cuties in need. Oh, they're so cute. Here's a live look now at Piedmont Hospital in the heart of downtown Augusta. All right over the next seven days. All right, thanks, Anthony. Did you buy something from the Prime Day sale? And whoops, now you don't want it? Well, in our What the Tech segment, we'll explain why you might not want to return some of those Amazon Prime Day purchases. The live by camera. The early numbers are in, and Amazon Prime Day was the single biggest online shopping event in history, with more than 300 million items purchased over just two days. Many of those items will be returned for a number of reasons, but as our consumer tech reporter Jamie Tucker explains, returning too many items to Amazon could cost you. Now, some Amazon shoppers know they're going to return a package even before they open it. If you have some returns, there are a few things you should know. Returns of Prime member purchases sold and shipped by Amazon are free with only a few exceptions. All you need to do is click on your orders, choose the item you want to return, and then you'll be asked for a reason, none of which are, I changed my mind. Print out the shipping label, box them up, and ship it back yourself, or take the item to a UPS location or Kohl's department store. Read the return instructions closely. Do not put it in a box. Just take it inside, let them scan a QR or barcode that Amazon will email you. Now, Amazon won't say how many returns it processes every year, but the American Retail Federation reports that in 2021, returns by all online retailers totaled more than $761 billion. So, yeah, you can probably do the math. Golf's major final championship is underway at St. Andrews. Alyssa Lyons has the latest on who won't be making it to round three. And some big names, Alyssa. And there's no bigger name than this. Tiger Woods has potentially played his final Open at St. Andrews. The three-time Open champ missed the cut after round two. Woods shot a three over 75 in the second round, topping out at nine over 153 at the old course. It's the first time Woods has missed the cut at St. Andrews since 2015. That year, he missed the field by seven strokes. This isn't the last we've seen of Tiger, just possibly at St. Andrews. Woods said he would compete in more Open championships. The earliest the Open would return to the old course is 2027. By then, Woods would be 51. They've been doing this since 1995, and uh, um, I, I don't know if I'll be physically able to, to play another. British Open here at St. Andrews. I still certainly feel like I'd be able to play more British Opens, but I uh, don't know if I'll be around you know, uh, when it comes back around here. So. Of course, in 2000 and 2005. All right, let's take a look at outside of our station. We're seeing a good thunderstorm off in the distance. This is looking towards North Augusta, so some rain could be on the way for downtown Augusta and North Augusta. We'll look, have another look at radar, and we'll talk about that weekend forecast coming up next. Five letters is all it takes, and you only get six. Five letters is all it takes.
is all it takes, and you only get six chances to guess the word of the day, but it won't only be on your phone anymore. Wordle is getting its own word game. Hasbro is partnering with the New York Times to make a tabletop game for the family. You'll go against each other to guess the letters of a word picked by the host. It's expected to hit shelves in October, so looks like this could be a Christmas gift. Yeah. There you go. I don't know. We're yeah. good competition with the family. That that seems pretty fun there. I, I think so. I think to see too, like if they would keep it as that digital kind of platform, like what they have now, or if it's more of like a board game kind of thing too. So that could be fun. It could be a lot of fun. It could. I mean, and if you have a competitive family. It can get ugly. It can get ugly, but that's, it just makes it that much worse. I know, right? It's, it's a little bit more fun, too. So <laughs> just kind of have that balance of competition, especially when you're dealing with the family, because then you got to stay with them once the game's over, too. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at radar right now. We are seeing a few scattered showers and thunderstorms. We'll zoom into this one between Augusta and Aiken. This is actually moving in the direction of downtown Augusta. So if you're in north Augusta, downtown Augusta, just be prepared for a, a scattered shower or thunderstorm a little bit later on. And some more heavier thunderstorms in some of our southwestern counties as well. Let's take a look outside over our station. Check out this view of that thunderstorm we were just talking about. This is looking toward downtown, uh, looking toward uh, downtown North Augusta. You can just really see those dark uh, shades of uh, coloring out there. So pretty intense. It's still registering as sun, uh, sunshine at the meter at Bush Field, but we are expecting more of those showers and storms as we go through this evening. Just hit or miss over the next couple of days. And as we go through this weekend, upper 80s to near 90 degrees and on and off showers expected as we go through the afternoon. Afternoons, and that trend will continue as we go through the next seven days. Next week, good chance of rain every single day. Oh, much like this week. Wonderful. Thanks, Anthony. Peach Jam is almost here, and this year it's back with spectators for the first time since COVID. We look at the wide impact this event has on our area ahead on News 12 at 6 o'clock.